In this video, I will show you how you can use SAP HANA Cloud to make anonymized data available to data consumers using SAP Analytics Cloud. We will also see how data controllers and data protection officers can monitor data anonymization using the SAP HANA cockpit. Let's say you are a data controller or data protection officer of a travel agency and you are responsible for defining anonymization of data in your organization. You are asked by a data analyst who would like to access customers' travel data to identify ways to optimize costs and experience of business travel customers. Since the travel data contains a lot of sensitive personal information, the data analyst should only have access to the data on an anonymized level, which means they should not be able to identify specific customers when analyzing the data. First, let me show you the data stored in my SAP HANA Cloud instance. Using the SAP HANA Database Explorer, which I accessed via the SAP Cloud Platform Cockpit, I'll preview the tables that are located in my HDI container Experience and Travel Expense. In the Persons table, you can see customers' names, gender, age and frequent flyer status. These identifying and quasi-identifying variables need to be anonymized. In the Experience table, you can see data relating to customers' travel experience, like satisfaction ratings. In the Expenses table, you can see transactions customers had during their travels, including dates and exact locations. Now let me show you how I created an anonymized view. I defined gender and frequent flyer status as quasi-identifiers with embedded hierarchies. For age, I used a hierarchy function. For all quasi-identifiers, I used the method of k anonymity with k equals 8, which means that at least 8 people are indistinguishable with the same combination of quasi-identifying variables. In the hierarchy function, I specified the age values should be generalized to a 5-year range on level 1 and on a 10-year range on level 2. Let's look at the anonymized data now. Here, you can see that the age column now only contains ranges of 5 years instead of exact age values. This way, people cannot be re-identified based on their age anymore. Let's see how this anonymized view is computed. I will first query the SAP HANA Cloud System view views in order to find the definition of the anonymized persons view by opening the SQL console of my database. There, you can see that the view is based on a SELECT query to the view containing the original data persons. If I open the explain plan of this view, you can see in row 3 that the query contains an anonymized view operator, and in row 5 that it refers to the original persons table. This shows that the original data stays untouched and the anonymized view is then computed on top of it. This way, the anonymized view always contains the latest data. For my last step here, in order to make the data available in SAP Analytics Cloud for the data analyst, the data needs to be in a calculation view. Let me show you the calculation views I created in Web IDE. I want to compare the anonymized and non-anonymized data in SAC, so I need two different data sets. You can see in this calculation view the data set that contains the original non-anonymized data. It mainly consists of a join node that combines the data from my tables. This other calculation view shows the anonymized data, so the only difference in the calculation view is that this one refers to the anonymized view. Now let's see what the anonymized data will look like for our data analyst. In the SAP Analytics Cloud dashboard, on the left side you can see the data that has not been anonymized and on the right side you can see that the data that has been anonymized. If I drill down into the non-anonymized data, for example in the age categories, you can see quickly that there are only very few people in the categories. The further I go down, the easier I could identify the people in these categories, therefore exposing their sensitive data. In this case, I can get to a point where the age is broken down so far that there are only two people left with the age of 19. Let's say the data analyst knows one of these people and knows he is a frequent flyer and applies these filters. Now only this one person is left revealing all their data, including even the locations that they stayed at, resulting in a violation of their privacy. 
Now you can see why this non-anonymized data must not be made accessible to the data analyst this way. Let's have a look at how data anonymization solves this problem. On the right, in the anonymized data, I will try to do the same drill down. Since the anonymized view hides people in a group of at least eight individuals as I specified, I cannot drill down further into the age dimension to get any results with less than eight people in a category. But this limitation does not result in any less accurate results. For example, if the data analyst wants to look at the data of travelers who are younger than 25, male and frequent flyers, and applies these filters, the results of the anonymized data on the right are the same as for the non-anonymized data on the left. So, no data is lost. The individual we singled out before is now simply hidden in the group, while the data remains fully intact and provides accurate results on a group level. Lastly, let's have a look at how a data protection officer or data controller can monitor and evaluate the anonymization used in their database. I will go to my SAP HANA Cloud instance in the SAP Cloud Platform Cockpit and open the instance in HANA Cockpit. There, I will go to Security and User Management. On the Anonymization Report card, I will click on View Available Anonymization Views. Now I can see all reports available for my databases. I will click on the report for the anonymized view I showed you earlier with the status ready. At the top, I can see the anonymization method and parameters I used. Clicking on the different concepts and KPIs here will give me further information explaining each of them. In the supporting KPIs area below, I can have a look at several indicators to evaluate the effectiveness of my anonymization like inverse K, which shows me the probability to re-identify an individual based on my anonymization method. There are many more KPIs you can explore that will give you detailed insights and help you optimize the anonymization method to your needs. At the bottom of the report, I can see all relevant columns of my calculation view and can look at the hierarchies of my quasi-identifiers. Here you can see the hierarchies used for gender and frequent flyer status. Here you can see the hierarchies based on the hierarchy function I defined earlier. You can see again the 5 and 10 year ranges for the different levels of generalization. If I would have used the anonymization method of differential privacy, which adds random numbers to numerical values like income, the report would reflect that, as you can see here, in a report for a different anonymized view of mine. Using these reports, I can make sure that my anonymized views are working fine and result in a low probability of people being re-identified while the data consumers can look at the data the way they need it and everyone's data is safe and secure. And that's all for now. Please check our website for more demos and tutorials. Thanks for watching.